For many of us, the Nintendo 64 was the game console of our childhood. Whether it was epic adventures through time, or the sleepless nights of four-player Goldeneye, the games are etched into our memories, and along with them, their tunes. There were many great composers who worked on the Nintendo 64, but nobody embraced the console more than this guy. Grant Kirkhope. As an in-house composer for the development studio Rare, Grant composed the music for a total of five Nintendo 64 games. GoldenEye 007, released in 1997, Banjo-Kazooie in 1998, Donkey Kong 64 in 99, and in the year 2000, Perfect Dark and Banjo-Tooie. Five iconic game soundtracks in just over three years is impressive enough, but in this time Grant also wrote over 100 tracks for Project Dream, an RPG game by Rare that was ultimately cancelled. And while Dream was eventually reworked into Banjo-Kazooie, the different tone of the game meant that most of the tracks had to be scrapped. But what makes Grant's work in this era truly astounding is when you consider the severe limitations of the Nintendo 64. While it outclassed all of its opponents in terms of raw power and graphics, when it came to audio, the console was well behind the game. It lacked a dedicated sound chip, unlike its competitors and even predecessors. So all the audio processing had to be done by the main processor. This meant that any sound effects or music would literally be impacting on the performance of the game. Which is why when you play Mario Kart 64 with three or four people, there's no music. Another problem was the limited storage space on the Nintendo 64's game packs. Even when pushed to their maximum capacity, the cartridges could only store around 64 megabytes of data. Compare that to CD-ROMs, which could easily offer over 10 times that amount. So while the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation could boast CD-quality orchestral music, the Nintendo 64 had to use super-compressed MIDI files that ended up sounding not that different to the Super Nintendo. Little innovations permeated Grant's music and sound design in order to push what was possible on the console. To save on space, he would often repurpose audio samples. The guitar in GoldenEye's main theme is made up of only three short samples, chopped and changed in various configurations. In Banjo-Kazooie, the voice of Clanker is actually just Banjo's voice slowed right down. Hi. And it's the reason Grant chose to base so much of the game's music around the marimba. It's a small audio file. It's this resourcefulness that allowed Grant to fit the entirety of Banjo-Kazooie's soundtrack into just one megabyte. And that includes all of the sound effects. It took ingenuity to overcome these limitations on the Nintendo 64. But truly great composers such as Grant Kirkhope actually triumphed as a direct result of it. I think sometimes because you had such limitations on the what instruments you could use, you had to write a good tune. You had to kind of make sure you wrote a decent chord sequence and a good tune because you had no great synthy washes you could put everywhere and big reverbs, it just didn't exist. Grant's secret was to ensure that all his music had a strong compositional backbone because he wasn't able to hide anything behind fancy production. Almost all the tracks in Banjo-Kazooie are constructed around two things. Umpa rhythms, the two alternating notes in the brass section which makes it sound goofy, and tritones, the furthest difference in pitch between two notes in an octave, which is meant to represent the opposite natures of Banjo and Kazooie. Yet even though the tracks share this common foundation, their unique and inventive melodies keep them from becoming repetitive. By ensuring strong composition in all his work, it allows Grant to get away with things a lazier composer can't. Steel drums are an absolute cliché for tropical beach levels, but even if you replaced them in Treasure Trove Cove, you'd still have a great piece of music that elicits the same summery feel. The same is true with Freeze Easy Peak. The bells may give it a distinct Christmassy feel, but it's really the melody and instrumentation that makes it wintry. A less talented composer relies on these cliches, but Grant Kirkhope uses them tastefully to aid the music. 
In Mad Monster Mansion, Grant uses this spooky theremin sound that's used in every haunted house ever, as well as some dark sounding chords. But when he combines it with that oompa rhythm and a fun melody, somehow it just works. It's beyond me how he manages to pull this off. But what elevates Grant Kirkhope above many others is his ability to replicate this across different styles. His utmost priority is setting a tone for a game. Banjo-Kazooie sounds goofy and waddling, GoldenEye's rocking soundtrack is based around the Bond theme, and Perfect Dark's symphony meets synthesizer score was well ahead of its time. And looking beyond the Nintendo 64, Grant's orchestral works for games such as Civilization Beyond Earth, Kingdoms of Amala Reckoning, and Viva Piñata are among his finest work. But no matter the changes in style or technology, you can hear Grant's DNA underpinning all his music, and it's because his process doesn't change. Grant is the type of musician who will choose a single part and meticulously work on it until it sounds perfect. It doesn't matter what that part is, whether it's an emotive flute performance, a rousing sci-fi anthem, or a gloopy swamp piece that has a beat of frogs. His process is exactly the same, and it's this, along with his own humility, that allows Grant to be so versatile, and yet create music that sounds so familiar and full of character. It's Kirkopian. Grant's music was important to me and many other children because it introduced us to a different type of music by creating something appealing and really good in an accessible way. And even now we have much to learn from him, to be resourceful, to embrace limitations as opportunities for creativity, and to build our work with a solid foundation. And with Banjo-Kazooie's spiritual successor, Ukulele, right around the corner, it's obvious that even after 20 years, Grant Kirkhope's legacy is still not over. Thank you so much for watching. Just the other day, I launched a Patreon page for GameScore Fanfare, and one of the perks is having your name in the video, like these wonderful people who I am incredibly grateful for. Thank you so much. Head on over to see some of the other perks on offer. Otherwise, check out some of the other videos I've made, and I will see you in another two weeks' time.